Hey, Yorktown family. Thank you for taking the time to watch this short video. As, a, as we sit here in this season of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, as a follower of Christ, do you feel the tension of between living in this world and awaiting the next? Uh, do, you, do you find yourself being consumed by the problems and the potential direction of this country while only casually thinking of heaven? I mean, don't get me wrong. We, we should be concerned about what's going on, but not consumed. Uh, there's no doubt that we're to be good stewards of the life that God has entrusted to you and me, and we're to be good citizens. The Bible makes that clear. Uh, but uh, th this world is not our ultimate home. Now, I, I know you've heard that before, but it should be becoming more real to us. Perhaps you've heard the phrase, you can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. What does that mean? That you can be so focused on heaven that you can't relate to anybody, that nobody can relate to you. Uh, well, I believe the inverse is true as well. You can be so earthly minded that you're no heavenly good. By that, me, uh, I mean that you're so concerned and focused on this world that you can get so discouraged and depressed to the point to where you're debilitated. No, that's not what God desires. I mean, what does that communicate about the living hope about which the apostle Peter speaks in his letter? Again, if you've confessed Christ as Lord, then we're just a sojourner uh, on, on this planet, an alien. We're just, we're just passing through. We need to remind ourselves, I guess, what the Bible says is going to happen in the latter days before the second coming of Christ, that things are going to get bad. L let me read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Let's see if any of these sound familiar. But know this, that hard times will come in the last days. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. I'm kind of depressed just reading that list, but do you, do, do you see that going on? Now, 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 I'm not saying that these are the last days. There's a lot of people out there claiming uh, these are the latter days. They could be, uh, but what I'm saying is that that's what it's going to look like before Christ comes. And it could be that we're seeing what Jesus called the labor pains uh, as a precursor to that which is to come when Jesus comes back. So, so what do we do as Christ followers? I've had a couple to three conversations over the last 24 hours with people who find themselves waiting they're, they're in isolation, they're frustrated, and they're waiting for this season uh, to be over. Uh, but, but, you know, and this is a time of waiting. I mean, I think all of us would like to know, hey, just give us a date where we can begin to open up and, and re-engage in society. But, you know, waiting in Scripture doesn't mean doing nothing in the meantime. In Scripture, waiting is active. How can you wait? Well, you can wait in the Word. I read an article, a disturbing article, uh, today from the Barna Research Group where, it, it, quote, Americans' Bible engagement dra dramatically declining amid COVID-19. Uh, the Bible engagement shouldn't be declining. It should be climbing. I mean, only in the Word of God do we find an eternal perspective about what is going on. So let me encourage you, while you're waiting, wait in the Word. Get you a good reading plan and stick with it. Be nourished on a daily basis. Again, we can watch the news to the, to the point to where we're, we're debilitated, but be encouraged and strengthened and nourished by a daily reading of the Word. Also, a, a passage of Scripture that has always been fascinating to me is 1 Peter uh, verse, or chapter 4, verse 7. Listen to this. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded for prayer. He doesn't say the end of all things is near, so sell everything, freak out. He says, be alert and sober-minded for the sake of prayer. Not be alert and sober-minded for political action, but for prayer. Now, th this is definitely, again, I'm not opposing being politically involved and active, but you, you hear what I'm saying. It's time for the church to be sober-minded and alert when it comes to prayer. This is definitely a time for the body of Christ to pray. We need to cry out to God on behalf of our city, on behalf of our churches, on behalf of our country. Now let's cry out to God for a spiritual awakening 
Do you really believe that God longs to stir the hearts of people? So let's cry out to God uh, um, uh, for, for that. Let's be, let's be diligent and determined when it comes to our prayer. You know, it, it, it struck me that most of us get alerts and notifications on our phones uh, about Facebook posts and tweets and news updates. Wouldn't it be cool to set an alert or a notification on your phone throughout the day to remind you to pray? In, in Luke 18, 1, it says, Jesus told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not give up. B because that's our tendency. We don't see something happen, and so we give up praying. Uh, but Jesus tells a parable about uh, encouraging us to pray always and not to give up. Now, 18.01, that's military time for 601. So what I've done is set a reminder at 601 every night uh, to uh, pray. And when it goes off, Renee and I, whomever I'm with, uh, we'll just stop and I'll explain that parable, and I'll say, let's pray. And Renee and I pray specifically for a handful of things that doesn't take uh, but a minute or two or three, but it's a flash prayer that we stop and, and pray for those things. Wouldn't it be great if the Yorktown body, all hundreds of us, could set our alarm uh, for 601 every day and know that the Yorktown family is praying for the same thing and at the same time? Uh, I think it could be incredibly powerful. So why don't you do that? So it could be 6.01 a.m. or 6.01 uh, p.m., but just set a reminder and to, to refocus yourself on what really matters. In the coming uh, weeks, we're going to be having a unique opportunity to pray corporately. I don't want to give anything away right now, but I'm very excited about what this looks like. We're still working on the details, and we're going to let you know in the coming days about this opportunity uh, to pray for our city, country, uh, churches, county, schools, so forth. So um, be on the lookout for that, but really excited about putting this all together. So I want you to be encouraged and hopeful, Yorktown family. Let's be alert and sober-minded for the sake of our prayers. And remember, again, at the risk of sounding overly simplistic, we're just passing through uh, this world. Our life is but a dot on the, on the line of eternity. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, let me encourage you to continue to stay tuned for updates concerning our next phase of regathering, which includes Bible fellowship, kids church, uh, child care. Uh, we had tentatively set some dates on the calendar, but with the uptick in cases, we're, we're pushing that. Uh, please continue to pray for your church leaders as we make decisions affecting the church. Uh, this Sunday, I'll be preaching a message entitled, Are We In for the Long Haul? the characteristics of a, or how to be a timeless church. We're going to be looking at the letter that Jesus wrote to the church in, in Philadelphia that lasted for hundreds of years. And so join us Sunday morning at, at 9 o'clock or 1045 or online at 9 o'clock. Again, I, we'd love to, to hear from you and to pray for you. I've had some appointments even today. Uh, just visiting with people, catching up, and, and praying for them and encouraging them. I'd love to love to hear from you. Uh, Jeff at Yorktown.cc. Let me know how I can pray and uh, what's going on in, in, your, in your life. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you uh, in person or online Sunday. Again, have a great weekend, and God bless you.